this little PS1 came from eBay with a couple of faults and I even managed to throw in a couple of my own faults during the repair process. This is how I got on. Well I've picked up a, as you can see it's a PS1. The listing says PlayStation PS1 slim mini console not working does not power on. I've used a power supply I know works but it's dead no lights or sound disc doesn't spin up I don't know what the issue is console only blah 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 and indeed I give it seven and a half nothing it's definitely doing nothing see what's inside first impressions not too bad someone's been in because this has been taken out I think this is going to be a a straightforward fix on this one. You see, I think that's it. Right, seven and a half volts. There we go. So we've got power. We'll go put it back together and we'll see. Uh, see if a disc works. Video cable. And power. Tally's on. I've got a game somewhere. I've just had it. I die hard. There's me power on. And I've got... I haven't even got a picture. There we go. I've got the Sony logo. I've got a Sony logo, but the game... The game's not playing. I've got the power supply in for the, for the disc. But it's, it's not moving. The ribbon cable looks okay. Put that out again. And we'll look for any signs of damage on the board. Now oh, there's a problem. First thing I'm going to do is some muck around here. I'm just going to clean that switch up, put some IP in there. If I press the switch down, I can hear so I know that switch is working. So I've cleaned that switch. We well, know that switch works. There's no movement in the CD at all. I'm trying to work out if one of the which one of these pins. One of these pins must be supplying power. Looking at that, it doesn't look like I'm getting power to the drive. What is CN701? Let's have a Google. I'm not getting any voltage. That looks like it's blown up. Then Google's going to be my friend here. So if I look at the power connector for the CD drive, which is just here, it gets its power from this chip. And I've got the schematic for the chip, which is here. Now well, here's the connector, and it goes to this chip. The chip has power on pin. 10, 19, and 28. And if I probe those pins on the board, they are all shorted to ground. Now we're looking at power rail. There's a power rail comes off all the three pins here. And on the other side of the schematic, there's MOT. There's the voltage rail there. So I think I've got a short on the voltage rail. And that goes to capacitor 605 and an inductor 601. And the board, a little capacitor down here. And that, straight to ground on the negative, which is what you would expect. And I go straight to ground on the positive side of the capacitor too. So here's 605. So I think that's shorted, or this could be, this is the inductor, L601, L601, that could be shorted. So I think I'll raise one of the legs off this capacitor, and I'll see if that clears the short on the voltage rail. So this is the capacitor, 605. So I'm going to take this off and see if it removes the short on that power rail. The cap's off. This is the chip in question, ground and pin 10, that's 8, 9 and 10. 
and I've still got I've still got a show so the next component I'm going to look at is this little inductor there we go 8, 9 and 10 to ground real shorten Right, so there's the capacitor and the inductor back on. Looking a little bit worse for wear, but it's back on in one piece. Just about. I started looking at these smaller capacitors, which were shorten around the main chip. And I started taking them off. And when I was taking them off, I've pelleted the spindle motor connection there. It's, it still works. And I've lost, I've lost a resistor which I've replaced. I've exploded a cap here and the original cap which looked faulty is down here. Eventually when I took that off that that had shorted. That was the, the short cleared and that was the fault. So I wished I'd spent more time and care checking that original cap where the motherboard's got a little bit of damage and if I had it if I had tested that properly, I would have saved myself some time. So I've bought some replacement caps and I'm going to put them replacement caps on and I'm going to see if I can get this thing back working again. So we've just got the beep on there, no beep. The beep on there, no beep. So it was pin 10 which was shortened to ground this one and there's no short got a beep no short so let's plug that in to the power supply um, and we'll see if we've got any voltage so we've got the little power lights came on I can't see it on there but it's it's on and we'll check for we'll check for voltage on these pins We'll check for voltage on this chip first. 1.9. Tell you what, we'll plug this in. Got some power. Now if I open and close it. Still have nothing. So I am getting power. 1.9 volts. 1.9 volts. I've got no voltage there. Now according to the diagram, I should be getting 7.4 volts to this chip, which drives the motors. And my multimeter reads 1.3. Got a problem with the power supply, still got a problem with the power supply to that chip. So I'm gonna to have to go back to presumably that's eight volts from C605. 605. What voltage have I got here? 1.3. And when you get in 1.3. When you're getting 1.3 volts on a positive of 605, so the problem must be somewhere further down the line. If I'm looking at this schematic right, I should have about 8 volts on the front of that capacitor, and I haven't. I've only got 1.9. And that comes from here, 1.9. If I'm right, this is an inductor. Yes, I know, before you start typing away on the keyboard there to tell us that there aren't inductors, they're fuses. I do realise that now. Carry on. 1.9. But going into the inductor is... me 7.2. And that's what I need. On that chip, I need 7.4 on that chip. 
Now, if I test the inductor above it, I get 7.2. And on the output of that inductor, I get 7.2. And it's the same size inductor. So I think this inductor is only giving out 1.9. And that's why I'm not getting the voltage to drive that chip. So I need to find a replacement for that. So that's what I'll do next. I'll replace that part. Two months it's taken these to arrive. No continuity on this bottom fuse. So I'm hoping to take this off and pop a new fuse on and I'm hoping that'll give us the, the voltage to the optical drive that I'm looking for now if I put the hot air on that fuse I'm worried about blowing this cap so I think I'll take that cap off first and get it out of the way there we go So I'm hoping that that fuse has fixed it. Discs in. Yes, the CD's spinning. I think I've got a game. I can hear it spinning. Ah, what's happening? My power supply, my, the, C, the CD drive's spinning, but my power supply is, I'm powering it with a bench power supply, my power supply is cutting off as if there's a, as if there's a short. There it's gone again, and it's resetting the console. So I have a picture on the screen. I have seven and a half volts on my bench power supply. I'll put a game in. Now watch me bench. It's cutting off. So it's trying to load a game, but the bench power supply it's finding a short, I think. I could be wrong. And it's resetting the console. So what's happening with that? Answers on a postcard, please. I've only got one amp on the power supply. Is it possible that one amp's not enough? I'll turn my amps up on the power supply. Now it's gone up to 600, 700, 800, 900. That's it. It's just topped, it topped an amp there. It topped an amp. And the game, we've got a PlayStation logo. And that's it, look. Die Hard. Die Hard Trilogy. So I'm calling it a fix. Very happy with that. It's just PlayStation 1, but... I'm not sure how much I paid for it, actually. Knowing me, it wouldn't have been much. I love the, the PlayStation logo when it first starts up. Turn that power off. So it's took us two months. Two months to get that going. Oh, the spindle. The spindle's come off. I'd like to thank you all for coming. A bit of a simple one. I'm quite happy with that though. Quite happy that's fixed. And I'll see you all later.